Yeah, we'll go through those again at the end of class. Uh, so matter and energy is, is the uh, first real unit that we go over. Um, I like to define the word chemistry before we get in, get going here. Does anyone know what the definition of chemistry is? What do you think chemists do? Uh, I'll give you. I'll get you started here. The study of the the study of the blank of substances, we'll do it this way, bless you, bless you, and the changes they undergo. What's that word? Study of the blank of substances and the changes they undergo. What do you think chemists study? Why am I having you waste your time memorizing those elements? When they're written down in your reference table. What does this look like? What? Well, salt. It is salt. Does anyone know the chemical formula for salt? Marcy? NaCl. NaCl, good. So I know that's the formula for that. So I can study that because I know that. So I can see what changes that occurs if I do something to it. So what's the word? We have to know this about substances, otherwise we don't even know what it is. What? Close. Starts with a C. Composition. We have to know the composition. That's the whole point of learning all the elements early in the year. So when we learn about compounds and mixtures and substances and all types, you can tell me you know the composition of. If I say this is sodium chloride right here, you guys can say, oh, that's Na and Cl. So I know what's in there. You know what's in there. You have to know the composition and then all the changes they undergo. Who remembers from lab what this is called? This this blue uh, crystal stuff here. Copper 2 chloride. This is what it looks like when we dissolve it in water. So you know the composition of this. You know the composition of water. When you mix them, you know the composition of this solution. Okay? Then you take aluminum foil and you put it in there. The lab today did it. Labs tomorrow, you'll do it. You'll see this. Changes that happen. Okay? But you have to know the composition. All right. So that's chemistry. It's kind of a very vague uh, definition, but that's, that's good applies to many different things. All right, um, so now I think what we're gonna do is uh, let's just define matter, volume, and mass. Does anybody know the definition of matter, volume, and mass? Volume's always uh, an easy one. Let's, let's do matter first. What's the definition of matter? What's the matter? <laughs> I'm full of real, real bad jokes, as you can tell. What's the matter? Anything that, raise your hands. Does everything in this room matter? Yes, okay. So everything, well, almost. Light, not so much. Anything what? Anything that takes up space and? Has to okay, if it takes up space, that means it also has this. Mass, anything that takes up space and has mass. Anything that takes up space and has mass. Wait a second, you're telling me the air in this room is taking up space? I can move through it freely. It's not, it's not getting in my way. How can you prove it's taking up space? How can you prove the air in this room takes up space? doing it right now. Everyone's doing it right now. Breathing. Breathing. How does that prove air takes up space? Take a deep breath. What are you doing? You got into that one. What, what are you doing when you take a deep breath to prove that air takes up space? 
Yeah, your chest, your, your chest uh, gets bigger, right? Because your lungs fill up with air. That proves it takes up space. How can you prove air has mass? We need to think quicker. Inflating balloon. Very good. You can mass a balloon with basically no air in it, and you can inflate the balloon, mass it again. You need a probably pretty sensitive scale, but that would at least prove that the air in the balloon has mass. That's what I was thinking. Good job, bro. Thank you. Volume. What's the definition of volume? The amount of. Oops, that's supposed to be an M. The amount of. Come on, you guys should know these things faster. The amount of. Space something takes up. Well, instead of something, you probably should say matter, but. And then mass. Mass is kind of a tricky one. Mass has nothing to do with gravity, that's weight. So we don't talk about weight in here, we talk about mass. So I say mass something, or what is the mass of something, or I'm gonna mass this. I don't say I'm gonna weigh it. What is the weight? Because that factors gravity. So the mass of this pen on this planet is the same mass on the moon, on Jupiter, on Mars, even though gravity is all different, the mass is the same. Weight changes, so that's based on gravity. So mass is the amount of matter an object contains, or the amount of matter an object has. That's another way to say that. Okay. And that's why density plays a big role in that, right? You could have a tiny piece of lead in a huge piece of styrofoam. That tiny piece of lead may have a larger mass. Why? Because it has a greater density. But the styrofoam has a bigger volume, but a smaller mass. So density is a very important concept in here in understanding how these two work together, right? So density equals mass over volume. So if the mass goes up, and the volume goes down, then this is gonna go up, right? But if the mass goes up, volume goes up, this might stay the same. If this goes down, so the relationship between all three kind of affect each other. Just keep that in mind. I think you understand stuff like that for the most part, you may not realize it, but if you have something very small that is much heavier than something really big, that means that it has a greater density. All right. Okay, so now let's get into some other terms that we need to know. Um, let's do a little flow chart. Um, so we're going to start with matter and we're going to break that off into two different areas here. There's only two things in the world, one on the left, one on the right. This banana is one. Italian salad dressing. Mmm, looks delicious. That's another one. By the way, these are the same type of matter. This is a type of matter. This is a type of matter. These are the same type of matter. This solution is a type of matter that goes with these two. Yeah, these are all similar, different than these two. In here, there's something that goes over here with these people. They're not people. All of this stuff over here, zinc, copper, tin, silicon. Here, I'll bring, I'll bring tin over. Tin goes over with these two. So you have these two and tin. These are another type. So these two, we're gonna go, that's this type, and then all that stuff over here. Who knows the difference between what's happening here? What are these? This is tin, so it's a uh, element. What's this? It's salt, NaCl. What's that called? When you take two elements and put them together, physically or chemically. A compound. 
elements and compounds are two specific types of this type of matter. And that type of matter, substance, or substances. Pure, technically pure substance. Let's do that, pure substances. Elements and compounds are pure substances. That's a smaller part of the world. Think about it. There's only 118 of those. That's like half of that, sort of. And then there's like a bazillion compounds that you can put together with all those different combinations of elements. But still, I would argue that this here is most of what you interact with in your world. In your environment, most of it's over on that side. What is this? Not a substance, not an element, not a compound. What is it? The banana is also not an element or a compound. Anybody? Starts with an M. Mixture. Mixtures. Yeah, mixtures. That's it. That's all there is in the world. You either got an element, a compound, or a mixture. And there's two types of mixtures. Two types of mixtures, so let me come off over here. And then two types of pure substances. I already told you what those were. You have elements and you have compounds. Does anyone know the two types of mixtures? Two types of mixtures. Here we go. Let's open her up. I'm gonna walk around. There's the two types of mixtures for all you at home. Look at the difference between the two types of mixtures. These are two different types of mixtures. They have different names. Just look, I know you know what both of them look like because you saw it in lab and you know what Italian dressing looks like, but look anyway. Okay, so here's the two types of mixtures. Okay, so again, two types of mixtures. I sometimes don't show the thing. Does anyone know what they're called or what the differences are between these two? All right, let me back up. How come they're both called mixtures? They look real different. What is a mixture? Say it again. A combination of many things, or at least two things. What two things are in here? The copper two chloride and distilled water. Mixed physically. This was mixed physically. Not a chemical reaction here. Okay, everyone wants to run to their lab and write it down. Okay, this is a physical mixture. This is physically mixed too. How many things do you think are in Italian salad dressing? Let's just list some things, throw them out there. Count them out. Oil, Oil. water, vinegar. vinegar. What? Salt. Salt. What's the chunks? Salt. Peppers, garlic, sure. <laughs> Onions, oregano, I don't know. High fructose corn syrup, <laughs> soybean oil, barf, xanthanum gum, I don't even know what that is. Um, calcium disodium EDTA to protect, oh boy. Um, so I don't eat this stuff. Um, there's lots of different things in here, okay? So what I'm trying to get you to understand is that mixtures are basically when you take these things and mix them physically, sort of. You can also take other mixtures and mix them together. So, you know, a pepper isn't a compound or an element, it's a mixture, a pepper's an element. But if you mix a bunch of peppers together, then you get a certain type of mixture. 
So I guess what I'm trying to explain today is there's two types of mixtures. One of them looks like this, one of them looks like this. These are just examples. They don't all look the same, okay? Um, but these are the two types, and these are physically combined. Physically combined. Let's write down a couple things, and we'll, and we'll name them here. So um, over here, this is physical. Physical. Over here, off of compounds, put an arrow going up, chemical. Okay, when compounds are formed, you take two elements and chemically change them. Okay? Chemically change them. We'll come back to that in a second. There's two types of mixtures. What's the prefix for something that is the same? <coughs> prefix, something that is the same. Starts with an H. Hetero. Hetero means different. What's the other one? Homo, right. So this is homogeneous is one type of mixture. The other one is heterogeneous. So literally any mixture in the world is one of those two. That's it. That's the whole flow chart here. You got matter, which is literally everything. That breaks down into pure substances, which are elements and compounds, which I'm showing you, which you've seen. Mixtures, this banana is a mixture. It sounds really weird, but it is, okay? It's not an element, there's no banana element, okay? It's not a compound. You don't take a few elements, chemically mix them in lab, heat them up, and then, you know, poof, a banana appears, okay? This is a mixture, okay? Everything we eat is a mixture, okay? Some are homogeneous. Milk would be homogeneous. Why? This is homogeneous. Salad dressing would be heterogeneous. Why? Because it looks like this. Different. All different pieces, parts. It looks different. Different parts of it look different from other parts. This all looks the same. That's why we call it homogeneous. There's another word I want you to remember though. Uniform. Uniform. Homogeneous are uniform. The same throughout, the same throughout, the same throughout. Heterogeneous, different. Which is we're literally gonna write the word different. Different, actually the word is phases. I'll throw some chemistry terms in there. Different phases, what does that mean? Parts. There's different parts to that salad dressing. You have the peppers, you have the garlic, you have the the uh, uh, vinegar, the water, the oil, you have different things that you can literally see, okay? So same throughout, uh, I guess we don't need to write, I was gonna say different throughout, but that, that kind of covers it, okay? So anytime you have what's called a solution, what's a solution? Anytime something's dissolved in water, it is homogeneous, every time, why? Because it's uniform. What does salt water look like? Water. But does every part of it look the same? Yes, it's uniform. Gatorade, what type of mixture would it be? It's uniform, homogeneous, right? If you have Gatorade that has things floating in it, don't drink it, all right? <laughs> Someone give me a food that's heterogeneous. What's that? Smoothie. A smoothie, yeah, that depends too though. Some smoothies are uniform, but a lot of smoothies have different things in them. What else? Give me one more thing. Heterogeneous. What is it? Yes, mixed vegetables. Stir fry. Mm. Salad. Who said salad? Who said salad? Did someone just say salad? Who was it? Rain, was it you? Good job. Just let, just let me know. I, I just want to say good job. I, I didn't know who to say good job to. Good job. Don't, don't be shy of uh, me saying good job. If, if you said something I didn't like, just say slave said it. Um, all right, so uh, different, same, one more thing under homogeneous. I'm running into my notes here. Um, put a little star here, all solutions. All solutions, and again, what does that mean? Something dissolved in water, that's a solution. It has to be homogeneous, okay? Is milk really homogeneous when it comes out of the cow? Or goat or whatever you like? No, what's mixed in with it? If you appear to milk a cow and just let the milk sit, well, it would separate. What would be on top? The cream, the fat, right? 
So technically, technically, milk originally is this, but you can clean all that stuff off and make it homogeneous, right? Or, you guys know what um, homogenizing means? When you get homogenized milk? You know what pasteurized means, right? Maybe, maybe not. What's that? Well, pasteurized is when it gets heated up, so it kills all the bacteria. But uh, homogeniza homogenization, I have trouble saying that, is basically when they shake it up, stir it up so fast that all of the fat and cream gets dispersed throughout, so it looks uniform. That's why that word is what it is. It will look uniform. If you shake it up and mix it up enough, it will look uniform. That's called homogenization. All right, over here. Um, so elements and uh, compounds. Um, elements are formed naturally, except for the ones that are outlined, of course. Um, if you take two elements and chemically, two or more, sorry, and chemically combine them, it'll make a compound, and that's a chemical process. So compounds are put together chemically, whereas mixtures are put together physically. So a lot of mixtures you can separate pretty easily, right? We talked about this in lab, we talked about it in class. How would we separate the water in the... Uh, in the uh, copper chloride here? Can't filter it, right? If, we put, if you pour this through a filter paper, what would happen? All of it would go through. You're gonna see that in lab. All of this will go through, okay? All of this goes through. So we have to evaporate the water. It's just like salt water, you gotta evaporate the water. So physical, again, and we're gonna talk more about this, take more specific notes later. Here, if I take salt, and I wanna chop the salt, in half with a very small knife. So I have one grain of salt and I take a really small machete and I slice it. Will Na and Cl pop out? No, that's crazy talk, okay? It was put together chemically, you can't separate it physically, okay? You gotta separate it chemically. Electrolysis is one way to do it. So uh, I just wanna list a couple compounds for our notes here and then we're gonna switch gears just for the last few minutes. NaCl is a compound. Someone give me another one. And we will define this stuff a little better. I just wanted to keep the flow chart up here. Someone give me another compound. Water. Someone give me another one. We're gonna get two more. I'm breathing it now, so are you. Actually, we're exhaling it mostly. Carbon dioxide is a compound, CO2. And we'll get one more because this is one that you need to know. You can clean with it. Called ammonia. Does anyone know the formula for ammonia? The chemical formula for ammonia. All right. Well, now you're gonna know NH3. NH3. Okay. All right. Good work. Now, last thing we're gonna end class with, and I'm gonna give you a worksheet for homework, is uh, physical states. So I just gave you the overview of matter, and we'll talk more in detail about each one tomorrow. So let's talk about the uh, three um, physical states. What are they? Solid, liquid, uh, write it like I'm writing it here. Give yourself some space and gas. So you, uh, so at least just leave a little space between them. You probably know what they look like, but um, I'm gonna show you some pictures anyway because uh, I have them and they're cool. So, um, this is what solids, liquids, and gases look like. If you were to zoom in, if you guys, uh, someone get the lights, we can leave the blinds. Um, this is what the particles of a solid, liquid, and a gas would look like. So I'll show you, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sketch in your notes what they look like. If you were to zoom in and look at, um, oops, what happened? All right, here we go. Um, wait, give me a second here, see if I can do this. Go away. There you go. Ah. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Okay. No. What? Yeah, but I. It should still work. There we go. Oops. There's a solid. Okay. So there's solid particles. Draw it. And notice those little lines coming off it. What does that mean? They're vibrating, yeah. That's wonderful. Tell you what, we'll just not use that. 
and I'll just erase this. There we go. Solution. So go ahead, sketch something that looks like that for a solid. worksheet's real easy. So that's a solid. I'm going to kill that and show you a liquid now. So let's see, liquid, this is a good one. There's a liquid. So what do you notice about how a liquid is different than a solid? farther apart and they're moving around. I can't show the motion right now with obviously with this picture, but they're moving around. Solid particles just vibrate. That's all they do. Liquid particles can actually flow and move with spaces between them. So that's that's the liquid particle. Okay? So do the best you can to kind of sketch liquid. And now the gas, and I'll, I'll show these again tomorrow so I'm going quick. But the gas Okay, particles are further apart, moving very quickly. I actually have a little animation, which is much better. So here's what gas particles look like when they're constantly moving. And where is it? There it is. Okay, that's gas particles in motion. So the gas, the air in this room, that's what it's doing. And guess what? The hotter the room gets, the hotter the air temperature, the faster these particles move. So gas particles are in constant random motion. Solids are very close and vibrating. Liquids are a little further, not much further apart than a solid. Not much, and they're just moving around each other. Whereas gas is kind of like sugar high, bouncing all over the place. I always like to think of gas like a bunch of little kids stuck in a room, blindfolded on sugar highs. And you just tell them to run around. Go. <laughs> I mean, they might smack into each other, but it would be in the name of science. All right, so this worksheet's due tomorrow. What just happened? Learn? You want to learn some physics? So, again, this worksheet's due tomorrow. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, read the directions. And I am after school if you need any help with anything.